You might say that being superficial is okay. Gets the job done. Minimises fuss. Cuts down on time. But can everything, everything be reduced to a colourful screen and an annoying green bird? You've probably guessed by now that I'm talking again about Duolingo and my problems with it as a concept and my prob problems with it sort of tentacles on everything. Now, I've already made a video from a cognitive perspective, so I'm not going to talk about that today. I'll put it down in the chat. Today, I want to talk about how it trivialises and disembodies everything. I read, I've read more than three articles, but I've read particularly, for the purposes of this video, three articles, yeah? Well, actually, I've read quite a lot of articles by Dr. Paul Megan, who is um, a sociologist, linguist, expert in indigenous languages, Scottish Gaelic speaker, uh, yeah, just all round brilliant ideas person. And I read two articles about how Duolingo well, no, what, I read one article, I'll say it now. It said, apps like Duolingo have a big role to play in the preserving of endangered indigenous languages. Now, bearing in mind, about two thirds of the languages on the planet are indigenous languages. So Duolingo, they're in danger, yeah? Why? Well, we'll get to that in a moment, but apparently Duolingo, yeah, that's right, the disembodied swiping app, has a big role to play in their preservation. <sighs> lazy nonsense, isn't it? Is it? Is that true or is it just lazy nonsense? The other one was the. Uh, no, let me get that number right. Was it one point. Duolingo learned, launched um, Scottish Gaelic and 1.5 million people started the course. Oh, God, it's so depressing, isn't it? 1.5 million people had been convinced by marketing and a lack of alternatives to think that the best way to learn Scottish Gaelic was Duolingo. I've spoken about cognitively why that's not true. But I want to have a look. I read this article, which actually seems to have been reproduced by different outlets on multiple occasions. This guy, I think he's from Scotland. He speaks Spanish. He's been to many countries. He speaks English, the article's in English, and he sort of looks at the pros and cons, but extremely superficially. He says, well, you know, there's some good phrases on it. Again, you know, you have to memorise them. That's not easy. And you have to... Um, yeah, it gives an introduction to the language, but surely... There's some point where we have to accept that indigenous languages that are in danger are in danger for a reason, no? Why? Well, because the communities that spoke them have been oppressed and exploited, and their language has been usurped by a colonial language. Paul Megan mentions this in one of his articles. In fact, he mentions it probably in many of what he does. That somebody came along who wanted, right, this is not necessarily Scottish Gaelic, but it probably is, isn't it? But other indigenous languages in North America, South America, no, Africa, someone came along with the idea of extracting things and making an absolute ton of money, yeah? In order to justify doing this, they saw themselves as racially superior. They then impose, uh, impose their language on a community and didn't just destroy their language but destroyed their way of living and their practices. Now that is a brutal thing to happen, sometimes enslaving them and taking them to another part of the world, sometimes wiping them out as was the case in the Americas. And the languages perished with them. Duolingo is the best way, put in words in spaces on a colourful app, 
with a bright green bird and ignoring the culture of those communities and what and the history and what has happened to them and why those languages are endangered is the best way to offer support for that language going forward. Obvious. I mean, to anyone who thinks for more than a second, yeah, there's probably someone, some YouTuber, who's taking a hit in the back pocket, yeah, saying, oh, well, it's very nice, it opens it up to more people, and let's not think anymore. Let's all just be happy, memorising words in a decontextualised way. But that doesn't do any good for the communities who have been denied their languages for so long, for the communities whose way of living has lost touch with their language, it just really continues to extract profit. It's just another way of extracting, not from the land this time, not from the people, but from their noble mission to keep their culture and their language alive. That's what it feels like to me, extracting money now from that. Is there nothing left you can't extract profit from? Just put it next to advertising. I don't think this is right. Let's have a look at what, um, Dr. Megan said in his article that I read, um, which I will put underneath, and it's all about, it says this, languages aren't just endangered for no reason. They're endangered because the people who spoke them were brutalized, that they were shamed out of speaking that language because another colonial language, in this case, English, yeah, came to be synonymous with education. When compulsory education was introduced to Scotland, Scottish Gaelic was nowhere to be seen. That's what he points out. So that is the situation you're dealing with, okay? Speakers of that language were brutalized, yeah? There were punishments for speaking it at school, physical punishments over a number of years. So that is the situation you're dealing with. When European conquerors came to South America, it wasn't the case. I've been, uh, I've, I've been meaning to read David Graver, the, uh, the anthropologist's final book for a long time, and I, and I will read it. But I have been sort of following stuff about it, and one of the things I read was that it isn't the case that Europeans introduced democracy to the world. That it came from ancient Greece and it was Europeans who spread it. No, when they arrived in North America, they found communities of people who had made deliberate decisions about their lives, who had been living in one way, putting all their resources into honouring gods and, and the most powerful in the community, and then had moved away to a more egalitarian way of living. So it isn't the case that what we're dealing with or what were wiped out were just sort of Stone Age backwards communities. Not that that would matter if it was, you know, you don't do that, but what, there, were, there, was, there is knowledge to come from these communities that has been ignored, ignored for centuries because it suits Europeans to say, you know what, we introduced democracy to the world, you introduced colonialism. There may have been democracy in Greece, but with one thing we know you introduced is colonialism. Now, after all of those events and all of that brutalization, the best way to preserve, no, we're not the best way, Duolingo has a serious role to play in the revitalizing of threatened indigenous languages. An app, yeah, a colorful app where you, put words into decontextualized sentences is the best way to revitalize indigenous languages. After all of those things that happened, those communities and the culture